All right, now we've come back in off the lake and got everything kind of cleaned up. I've had a uh, little bit of time to warm up. We've got the fish prepared already. It's very simple to get these ready for smoking. Cisco's are very delicate fish, very easy to open up. And you notice all we've done is just simply remove the head with a fillet knife. And then we've taken all of the entrails out and got the body cavity kind of nice and clean. That's all there is to it. This fish is ready for smoking right now. We don't have to remove the skin or the scales. In fact, we want that on there because that will hold our whole project together while we've got it in a smoker. So we've, in the past, we always used to try and come up with the exact time. You notice there's a little bit of variation from one fish to the next. We always use a wet brine or a recipe that uh, required some calculations and trying to figure out how long we were going to actually soak these fish. In the last couple of years I've come up with just a way easier way of doing it and that's just to mix your brine in, it's the same recipe that I used to use for making the wet brine except now all we have here is just a powder. The basic recipe is so simple it's just a five pound box of canning salt and a two pound bag of brown sugar, you mix those together. In my particular case we add some garlic to it and some oregano. You can get the exact website or the exact recipe from my website if you want to, jeffsundon.com, it's already on there. Or you can sort of experiment with this. Just remember the five pounds canning salt, two pounds of brown sugar, that will be the basis for several batches of fish. And rather than trying to mix this up in a wet brine, all I'm going to do, I'll take about a cup of that powder, and this is just like shake and baking, getting ready to do your fish for a, a fish fry. I'm just going to use a Ziploc bag for my own convenience. You could use something a little bit larger, but this is literally now just dropping that fish into the bag and coat that with powder. The fish doesn't have to be excessively wet or excessively dry. You just kind of take it out of the sink after you've cleaned it up. And then what I'll do is just shake the excess powder off of that. And you can see that I've got the fish coated on both sides. That's got brown sugar on it and salt, a little bit of spicing. And then all we do is place that into, this particular bowl happens to be a plastic mixing bowl. You can use a crock if you have one. You can use a glass bowl if you have one. Just simply don't put that fish into any kind of a metal container. You want it to be plastic, glass, ceramic, and we'll just add fish. I prefer to put about a pound of that uh, brine mixture in the bag at a time. I don't want to overcoat them. I just want a nice even coating on there. And then as I need bowls, I can add bowls or subtract bowls to it. We're going to open that bag up. You'll see we've got that coated. As soon as, as soon as your coating starts to look splotchy, if you don't have a kind of a nice even coating on there, then add yourself a new batch of the dry powder. And we can kind of stack these up in this bowl for a period of time. At some point I'll have more fish than I can fit in this bowl. So by the time I get done going through and coating every fish, I maybe will have two or three bowls. Once I've got this coated, my particular taste, I like them sort of on the salty side, but not real salty. I let this soak for about six and a half hours. So once I've got these all coated up, we're going to put them in the fridge, let that sit for about six and a half hours, take them out, rinse them with water, and then we'll take that step two after we've had time to get the rest of these coated up. We'll let them soak. And we'll let them dry off just a little bit and then we'll take you through the actual smoking process. We'll show you how we get them in the smoker and turn those into nice brown smoked fish. Alright, now we've got all of our eight fish coated. That's a full load for my smoker. And you can see all I've done, it took me two bowls, these uh, nice mixing bowls or popcorn sized bowls. And what I've done is mix the, mix the powder on the fish, got a nice even coating. And I, you notice they're just stacked up. In the past, when we used to use the dry or the wet brine, we would have to make sure that each one of these fish was covered equally with liquid and so on and so forth. Using the dry method, the fish can simply absorb the salt that we've already coated it with. So that if they're stacked up a little bit, it's not going to hurt anything. Now, 
I'm going to set the timer on my oven and I'm going to let these soak for about six and a half hours. If you prefer fish that are somewhat saltier, you could go longer if you care to, or you can experiment even a little bit shorter. You don't want to underdo it, and overdoing it won't hurt anything, but the flavor will become saltier as you go. So we've got a little waiting ahead of us. We'll let these soak, I'll set the timer, and then after we get to the end of our six and a half hours, we'll go ahead and pull these out, rinse them with water, and then simply put them on a nice dry towel and we're going to keep those refrigerated until they dry a little bit. We'll go through that after we pull these out in about six and a half hours. All right, we're getting ready now. We're just about ready to put those fish into the smoker, but before we put them in there, I'm going to make myself a few wood chips. Now, you can just go to the store and buy a bag of wood chips. It doesn't make any difference. Hickory, apple, everybody's got kind of their favorite. What I've got here is literally some of my firewood that I've just cut into smaller pieces and then I'm just going to chop that up into some little small pieces that I can put into my uh, heat pan and these work really great. If you don't have a stack of firewood and you don't want to mess around with this like I say, just go ahead and buy yourself a bag of chips. We're just going to load this up a little bit drop a few of those in there they just happen to be the perfect size and then before we put those fish into the smoker I'm gonna bring that up to speed a little bit and get that smoke starting to flow and that way by the time we put the fish in we'll have some kind of control over how much time we've really got them in there we'll be right back Now we've got the fish from the, the pan, we've got them all dried out a little bit. And you see I want to put them on the rack with just a little bit of space in between each fish. I really don't want them touching each other. It's alright if a couple of the fin parts happen to touch each other, that's not going to be a problem. But you'll get little sooty spots and things that will be undesirable in the finished product if you let them touch. So we'll keep about that amount of space. We've already got the smoker heated up. And you see that I like the gas smoker because I can fire that up and get it set to go. We're just going to keep loading our racks. The heat is on, the wood is in, and all we have to do is finish loading our racks, shut the door, and then we'll go watch a movie or something like that while we're letting that smoker do its work. Alright, now we've had those fish in the smoker for just about three hours and I got a feeling that they're getting just about perfect right now so we're going to go ahead and open it up and take it a look. Uh, in three hours time I've only had to refill that smoke box one time. If you want them really heavy smoke you can keep that going so that the smoke is always pouring out and keep your heat a little lower but you do want the fish cooked so I keep it at around 240, 230. I want that to be done, cooked in about two and a half hours, and they'll be plenty smoky enough for anybody that wants to eat them. Let's have a look. There they are. You can see we still have a little, we still have a little bit of liquid dripping off of these right now, but they're awfully close to being done. A sure sign, guarantee way to tell. You can feel that that skin has started to separate away from the, the meat of the fish and they've got a nice golden brown color. Don't be fooled into thinking that you've got to smoke them until they're all dried out because after we take these out and wrap them up in some paper they're going to continue to dry a little bit even after we remove them from the smoker. So this is just about the perfect time. If there's a couple of drips of water coming out of them when you take them out don't worry about that. Just be sure that that feels like that skin has started to pull away and you'll know that that fish is nice and cooked inside and these are going to be delicious to eat. Alright, and here's our finished product. We've got eight nice tulabees, all smoked golden brown. We're going to let those cool off just a little bit and they'll get nice and firm. We're going to get some cheese and crackers and we're going to really enjoy these. If you want those, the recipe for smoking these, you can get it off my website, jeffsunden.com and I've got some other good fish recipes on there too. So. Go have a look and uh, have some fun.